Eurozone finance ministers give Greece an extra two years to meet its deficit and debt targets. But this throws up more questions than answers. One 32.6 billion euro question in particular. For more, I'm joined here in Brussels by Karsten Breske. He's senior European economist at ING. Karsten, thanks for joining us. Now, this 32.6 billion euros, that's the funding gap thrown open by giving Greece uh, those extra two years to meet its uh, debt targets. Who's going to pay for that? Um, it's probably the taxpayers, but they, you cannot tell the taxpayers that it's them. Um, it's the, the Eurozone countries that have to find these 32 billion euro. How they're going to do it? Probably with the typical European fudge. So lowering the interest rate on the two existing loans already, maybe extending the loans, but to really to do everything that it's not going to be called OSI, official sector involvement. So it has to be some covered action so to avoid the impression that the Eurozone countries would be giving in, that they would do debt forgiveness. Even though that's exactly what's effectively going to happen. Of course, if you do a re rescheduling of debt, no, ma no matter how you do it, in, in fact, it is at least indirect debt forgiveness. And isn't that something that the ratings agencies would term default? Too early to tell, um, but in the end, probably it w would it really matter? Not really, because with this new program, Greece would be financed until 2020, maybe even, uh, maybe even longer, so therefore it means Greece will not access bond markets for a long while. As you say, all options are being discussed, all options on lowering this debt burden are on the table. But one senior Eurozone official told me last night, as, you, as you've hinted at, OSI, official sector involvement, is completely off the table. It will not happen. Yet, Greece's debt is so large. How, is, is that possible? If you look at the numbers, and I think we talk about 190% debt to GDP ratio in Greece next year um, for 2020, I think we also heard reports that it will not be 120%, but maybe above 140%. This is still double, more than double the official Eurozone criteria of 60%. So whether this can be really labeled sustainable, I have my doubts. So which means further down the road, probably the rescheduling of debt that we might see now in the next two weeks will not be sufficient and we will again be here talking about probably some more in the face debt forgiveness. And it's that debt sustainability or insustainability, unsustainability if you like, that was a source of disagreement between the IMF and Christine Lagarde and Jean-Claude Juncker. Um, what, do we, what, what do you make of this very public spat? I think the IMF it wants to be very clear that they aim at this 120% level by 2020. Currently, the European countries are a bit more flexible right now, and we heard Juncker saying that it could be two years later. So, so which means debt sustainability for the European countries seems to be more of a stretchy word, while for the IMF it's going to be a strict one. They have to have this um, debt sustainability, otherwise they could not be able to continue funding the Greek program. This is in the rules of the IMF. Does it matter if it's 2020 or 2022? Really, I mean, let's be honest here, Greece isn't going to meet that target anyway. No, of course, that's a, in practice it won't matter. For the rules of the IMF, it does matter. Um, that, that's the whole thing, because we all know it's a mechanical exercise. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know whether growth will pick up anytime soon in, in Greece. And we probably will redo this debt sustainability analysis every three to six months. Um, so, of course, it is a very, it, it is a moving target. And finally, um, we, we, we also, we didn't get agreement last night on the next tranche of aid for Greece, this 31.5 billion euros, which Greece has done all it can, it's passed those votes in Parliament, it's approved its budget. Why, why is Germany in particular holding out on giving this next tranche of aid? No, I think this is a political game. I think the, the will to pay it out is there. Um, but the German government still needs to go to its parliament to get an agreement on a, let's say, revised version of the Greek program. This, I think, is now scheduled for the 19th of, the, of November. Surprise, surprise, it's one day ahead of the new scheduled Eurogroup meeting. So once the German finance minister has the agreement by his parliament, then they will also agree to pay out the next tranche for the Greek program. And finally, final question, I mean, uh, markets are reacting somewhat negatively to this outcome last night. Do you think that's a fair reaction and how long do you think this negative reaction will, will last? No, I think it will only be short-lived because in, in the end I think that the political will to keep Greece within the Eurozone is very strong. It is there. The money has not been paid yet but it's just a matter of time before the Eurozone countries will pay out the change and before they will find an agreement on how to bridge this new funding gap of 30 plus something billion euro. Carstens, thank you very much. That was Carson Breske, senior European economist at ING, joining me here in Brussels. I'm Jamie McGeever.
This is Reuters.